Welcome back to my channel. Two videos, less than a week apart. What did you do to be so lucky? Before I get into the direct, I do just want to quickly say thank you for the amount of support that my most recent video got. I know it's only been out for not very long. My channel has like doubled in subscribers from like May to now, which is just like kind of crazy because I don't really promote my videos at all. It is all just like random people finding it. So thank you for liking what I do. We're here to talk about the direct. I am going to be talking about Fire Emblem because that is the thing that is keeping eyes on my channel. I do want to talk about other games first. If you only want to hear my thoughts about Fire Emblem Engage, this is the timestamp. Skip ahead. The Nintendo Direct, very exciting. I had no idea they were doing one. I woke up to a text today from a friend that just said new Fire Emblem and then I lost my mind. And the, the rest of the Direct was good too, but Fire Emblem was the moment. It started off so strong and ended strong, but Fire Emblem was really the game. There was a really big focus on life sim games. I felt like more so than usual. I was so surprised at how many like, come plow the fields and maybe we'll kill some monsters. And in this one, you can get married and have kids. And in this one, you have to talk to a lot of people and depending on who you talk to and what you say, you'll get different things, different outcomes. It felt like many of the games were like that. Like I counted various day life, Ruin Factory 3, Atelier Ryza 3, Harvestella, Fay Farm, Harvest Moon, like just so many things. Yes, like they don't all do the same thing, but you know, same genre, just a little bit different. It was just surprising that in an hour long announcement, we just got so many of the same type of game. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm excited. I know everyone else is. I feel like that's not news. I wish the trailer showed a little bit more because this one feels quite similar to the, like the announcement teaser. It feels like we just got more of the same, but I'm so excited to jump off of things. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Gravity Rush. I feel like that game is an unsung hero in the industry. It is very, very good. I guess I just like free falling in video games. Um, so I'm just like really excited that a new game is coming out where you can do that. Pikmin 4. I really enjoyed Pikmin 3. I haven't finished it. I think if I wasn't a manager as my day job, uh, I would really love to play a game like that, but it just feels like you go to work and do work and then you come home and it's work, even though it's in a fun package, you're still telling people what to do. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. Maybe if I make partner, I'll be more interested in playing that game to the end because then I won't be a manager anymore. You know what to do. I'm not going to say it. Kirby's return to Dreamland Deluxe. Lots of words. I didn't realize that this was a, a Wii remake. I feel like I was just so focused on Kirby's Epic Yarn. I didn't even know that this game happened, um, but I'll probably buy it. I like Kirby. Will I play it? Yeah, like literally right here. I have Kirby. I also have Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This game is literally still in the, in the package because I'm horrible for playing games. I buy faster than I can play them. Like book, book people who buy too many books and they're just like, I don't actually want to read anything that I have, but I will buy a new book. Um, at least this game is open and I've redeemed the points on it. And I'll get around to playing this one day. I think I'm going to make a video about it, but you know, time will tell. <laughs> if you catch the upload, put on the notification bell and you'll know. You'll know if I make a video about Kirby. Octopath Traveler 2 is a game that I don't know if we need. That's, that's my controversial opinion of the video for people to be mad at. I don't know if we need an Octopath Traveler 2. I hope, I hope it's good. I think the first game is good. I think like the Bravely Default mechanics are excellent. Um, so I'm not mad that we're seeing that again. Also the art style that Square Enix or this division of Square Enix is leaning into is so beautiful. So yeah, we'll see. I, a small red flag for me is that it looks like all the characters have the same classes as in the first game. I'm not buying this, so I don't know. Maybe you tell me when the game comes out in eight months. I'm sure people will still be watching this then. Um, and you guys can let me know. And then just games that I thought were cool that I probably will buy. The Crisis Core remake, that looked really sweet. It's definitely probably distracting them from coming out with Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. But I don't know. I don't know. I think the fact that Zack is alive in the remake probably has something to do with this release. I'm just saying. Bayonetta 3 looks really good. Detective Archives Rain Code. That game looks cool. 
Danganronpa art style mixed with AI, the Somnium Files kind of gameplay slash premise. I'm looking forward to buying all these games. Moving on to the meat of the content. When it comes to this particular trailer, I'm going to be mindful of what I say because the last time I talked about a Fire Emblem trailer in a not so favorable light, the internet really let me know that they wish I hadn't done that. So <laughs> I'm treading lightly. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm really not. I actually thought this trailer was really, really good. Unlike the Three Hopes launch trailer, which was awful. This trailer gives us a glimpse. I don't think it reveals too much. Um, I think we're getting the the general story trope things that we tend to see in Fire Emblem. You know, light versus dark, some dragons, warriors, royalty. You got to beat things up. And we always have to call out the old games in some way or another, because if we're not looking to the past, how can we move into the future? And just in general, I think the trailer does enough to get gamers excited about the product. Engage is not a great name, but I know, I know why they did it. It highlights the main mechanic with these ring spirits. You're literally activating the fire emblem and then you become a part of the spirit that you summon. It looks really cool. It's an interesting execution. It's kind of like how Fates was about choosing your destiny, choosing your path, and Three Houses was literally about Three Houses. So yeah, they're really sticking to the convention of this is the important plot function. So that's what we're calling our game. <laughs> oh, Intelligent Systems, how I love you. Engage is clearly spiritually connected to Fire Emblem Heroes. When this trailer started, I just literally thought it was a big studio mainline game to represent the Hero series in a more official, whatever that means, capacity. And I thought we were playing, like the main character, Alir, was the self-insert player character summoner in Heroes, but that is not the case. We're in a different continent, different timeline, but the aesthetics and just the premise of summoning spirits from elsewhere, it's clearly inspired by Heroes. So the first thing we see is stained glass windows, three houses really knocked it out of the park with this one by showing us a big circular mural at the beginning. This very much reminds me of that. So we see Marth, Celica, Sigurd, Leaf, Roy, Lynn, Erica, Ike, Micaiah, Lucina, Girl, Corrin, and Boy Byleth. So there's 12 lords from the previous games. It's clear that they tried to like mix it up in terms of who they picked. It's clear that they wanted a variety in the roster. And also there's a bunch of different weapon types here too. Like the artwork of Lucina shows her with a bow. Ike in his little stained glass panel, he has an ax. So they obviously don't want everyone just using swords. After this, we see some normal Fire Emblem stuff. Heroes of Legend defeating monsters and suppressing them until a skinny, spooky Jafar type has nefarious plans of rising the demon from the dead. He looks like Validar from Awakening and I don't know, he's kind of evocative of the, the death lady from Heroes. I don't play Heroes, um, but he looks like her. I'll put a picture. Uh, thank God everyone in this universe is the same ring size because then what would they do? Then there's some general cutscene footage of fighting. I'm assuming a lot of this stuff is taken from the early game. Some of it looks like it could happen a little bit later, but I'm assuming most of this is like prologue, first three chapters. Then we see like combat that kind of looks like the early Fates trailers where it's like characters in an unspecified location. It's a little bit misty, a little bit foggy, and they're fighting just in the air, kind of. I don't think there's, there's no enemies. But again, I, you know, I love a callback. This franchise is really good for it. Um, if there's one thing this directed, it was really played in nostalgia. I'm looking at you, Goldeneye, and Pokemon Stadium 2 minigames. Alir, the player character, Watch that not be the actual pronunciation of his name. Um, sounds like he comes from a royal line of dragons slash dragon people. There's some sort of deity thing happening. He's of status. We know this much. I'm happy that dragon people are coming back in the Fire Emblem franchise. I know they were in Three Houses, but like, I just think Manakeets are so cool and characters who transform are really cool. And I think that was missing. So if someone doesn't turn into a dragon in this game, we're gonna have a problem. We see our opening cast in what I'm assuming is the prologue. So we have these two, they look like servants playing a sort of like Jacob and Felicia 
kind of roll. One of them's a mage, one of them's a cleric. And then we also have an old paladin friend who is too strong because he's in an advanced class. This is like a mainstay of the Fire Emblem franchise too. If you just started at Three Houses, you might not know that because Three Houses didn't have this specific character. Geralt is kind of that, but he's not playable. But previous games, like almost every single game has like a starting level one paladin character who is strong and is basically just there to help you get through the early game a little bit easier, but then usually they peter out towards the end and they're not as useful. We're shown a variety of classes, you know, Armored Knight, Pegasus Knight, Cavalier. They're all quite cool, uh, but I do personally appreciate that they've kept hand-to-hand -hand combat. That was something I thought was really cool in Three Houses. I'm happy it's still here. And then we see the main conceit of the game, the summoning of the Ring Spirits. We only see Marth, Sigurd, and Celica in the trailer, but later it sounds like the goal is, you know, to collect all seven Chaos Emeralds and then something will happen that's good or bad. Um, you know, save the world, end of the world. It's probably that. Who knows if there's more than 12 rings? I'm assuming there's only 12 because that's what, it, like, reflects the stained glass image at the beginning, but they could do more. We see there's a hub world that's traversable by the player. It'll be expanded throughout the game by meeting new people. There's probably going to be like a resource system or like quests, something to trigger those flags that move things along and progress the state of whatever encampment this is. The aesthetic of this base camp place is really, really clean. Uh, but I do hope it's a little bit more easy to get around in than the monastery or the base camp in Three Hopes. Those weren't bad, but sometimes it just took a long time to get from point A to point B, and you're probably going to use the menu anyways after a couple hours of playing because you get the idea. The location doesn't change. So I don't know. Hopefully they do something to make it a little bit more interesting. Outfit changes. They're back. We first saw them in Fates. They were still around in Three Houses. But I think Engage looks like it has more conventional use of outfit swaps. Okay, then they show us what Engage means. And summoning your spirit is one thing, but then engaging the spirit, something completely different. You fuse with them, you get an outfit change, there's a reveal. In some instances, you teleport. So yeah, Alir gets wings, and I'm pretty sure his sword changes to Mercurius. We see a cavalier using a combat art, and it looks like he gets some kind of bonus at the end too, it looked like a stat change. So it could be that the emblems are specifically tied to combat arts as well. We then also see this mage literally teleport across the map and she uses Ragnarok. So I'm interested to see how this mechanic works. I wonder if it's broken, like that's kind of my main concern. Or like maybe you can only use it a limited number of times per chapter. Maybe you can't reverse. Maybe that's gonna be something they take away. You get really strong attacks, but you can't go back turns. Could be interesting. Fire Emblem is really known for changing up the format. They are not beholden to any one thing. They can really do whatever they want. Um, and then we see like the key art at the very end. And the art style, honestly, it really looks like Dragalia Lost. Dragalia, Dragalia. I don't know what people call it. Is that an intelligent systems game? It's by Side Games and published by Nintendo. Something about it, I feel like there's a connection here. Anywho, that's all I have for today. Who knows when this video is gonna be out, I'm hoping sooner rather than later. <laughs> if you like my content, it is really helpful. If you engage, you know, comment, like, subscribe. I'm interested to see where this platform goes and where this channel goes and where my content goes. That's so fun. We could go on this journey together. Stick around and find out. Oh my gosh. I need to hang up. Sorry, babe, I gotta go.